In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop Actions along with Adobe Bridge to automate the process of getting RAW files ready for the web. A Photoshop Action records your every move and saves them as a single operation that can be called up anytime and applied to multiple images. Now, the easiest way to create an action is to manually perform all the desired steps on a single image. In this case, we're going to take a RAW file and optimize it for web viewing. So the very first step is to head over to the Actions palette, click on the triangle at the top, and select New Action. Let's call it Raw Images for Web. We'll hit Record. Note down here, the red light is on, telling us that Photoshop is ready for us to get to work. First thing we need to do then is actually open an image. I'm going to select and open a Raw file. Note that it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. You can see I've got my crop already specified and image settings were done previously, so I'm just going to hit open. Now since this version of the RAW file is going to the web, we need to do two things right off the bat. First, I'm going to bump this image down to 8 bits. I'm going to go up to Image, Mode, and just select 8 bits. It's going to reduce the file size, make the processing happen a lot faster, and 16 bits is overkill for the web. The second thing, very important, is that we're going to convert the color space of this image to sRGB. This ensures that the colors will display accurately when viewed in a web browser. So we're going to go up to Edit, down to Convert to Profile, and our destination space has sRGB already selected, so we'll just hit OK. Now I'm going to want to apply some capture sharpening here. I use PhotoKit Sharpener by Pixel Genius. Now watch very carefully here. In the Actions palette, hopefully you can see this on your screen, I've got a Sharpen folder, and inside that folder, I've got an action called 20D Sharpen. This actually runs the PhotoKit Sharpener routine and adds a little custom tweak to get the most out of files from my particular Canon 20D. You can use pre-existing actions when you're recording an action. This is a really great feature, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Since I have already made an action to sharpen the image, I'm going to simply select that action and hit the play button. Photoshop is allowing us to run a pre-existing action in the action that we're currently making. This is going to save you a lot of time as you get more and more comfortable with actions. Now let's think about image size. If my web template is set up for images at 600 pixels on the longest side, I can use the fit image command to make sure that both horizontal and vertical images stay within this maximum. Even though we're working with just one image right now, this step will save lots of time when we later run this action on multiple images of either horizontal or vertical format. So let's do that. We're going to go up to File, down to Automate, and choose Fit Image. Here in the constraint, I've got a width of 600 pixels and a height of 600 pixels. This doesn't necessarily give us a square image, but what it does is cap the width at 600 and the height at 600. So if the long side of the image goes top to bottom, that's going to be no more than 600 pixels. If the long side of the image goes left to right, that's going to be no more than 600. This is a great way to get images to fit inside of a template. We're going to just hit OK there. And now that it's resized, let's bring it back up a little bit to get a nice view of it. Now a quick trip to the image size dialog box. We want to check our resolution. We don't need 240. 72 is just fine for the web. Now we're ready for some output sharpening. Again, I'm going to be using PhotoKit Sharpener, but this time I'll choose it from the actual menu and run it manually. So we go up to File, Automate, and down at the bottom, PhotoKit Output Sharpener. In our sharpener set, we've got web and multimedia selected, and for the effect, we've chosen 600 pixel medium edge sharpen. That's going to be just fine for this image. Now, because PhotoKit Sharpener applies layers as it works on an image, I'm going to need to flatten it. So I'm going to go up to Layer, down almost to the very bottom, and hit Flatten Image. All that's left to do now is save the file as a JPEG. So I'm going to hit Save, and note that the Save As dialog box comes up. Photoshop will never overwrite a RAW file. Whenever you hit the Save button on a RAW file, it will bring up the Save As dialog box, leaving your RAW data pristine and untouched. So we're going to save it as a JPEG. Note here down at the bottom that our color profile of sRGB is embedded. And for now, we're just going to save it to the desktop. 
medium quality of 6 is fine for the web. And last but certainly not least, and this is a step that a lot of people neglect when they're building actions, we want to close the image. And that's it. We've made an action. So I'm going to press the stop button to stop the recording. Okay, so big deal, you're saying. We could have done these steps without bothering to create an action. But here's the payoff. I'm going to go into Bridge, and I'm going to select a few images. I'm going to take a horizontal image. Let's take a vertical and one more horizontal image. Now, with these three images selected, I can go up to Tools, Photoshop, and select Batch. Now, in the Batch dialog box, we've got our tutorial folder showing up under Set, and within that tutorial folder is the action that we just made, Raw Images for Web. So what this is going to do now is allow us to take the three images we selected and run our newly created action on all three images consecutively. This is going to be a great, great time saver. I'm using three images now just for the time constraints of this tutorial, but you can use 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 images if you want. One thing to take note of is that when you have open and save steps in your actions like we just made, you want to make sure that the override action open box is checked and the override action save is checked. Next we need to look at our destination. I'm going to save this to a folder and I'm going to choose that folder. I've got a tutorial images folder here that's going to be perfect. And another great feature of batch processing is that we can rename these files. We can choose any kind of naming convention that we want. Let's say we wanted to call these images um, client spec and give them, let's say, a two-digit serial number, and we're going to follow them up, follow them up with an extension. File extension is very important. You must, 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 must be sure to include the extension after your images, whether it's a JPEG, GIF, or a TIFF, it's going to make, especially for the web, it's going to make your files much more compatible with different operating systems, different web browsers, and it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier. So now we're just going to hit OK. And Photoshop now is going to take those three images and run that action on it. You can see it happening right now. It's happening so fast that it's not even taking the time to draw the image on the screen. My hands are not touching the keyboard. The beauty of this is now I can go back into Bridge, and while Photoshop is chugging along, I can move around images, I can resort things, I can even say, well, let's take some time and, and do some more raw edits on these images here. I can do white balance, I can do custom temperature, everything like that. I have all the tools of Bridge available to me while Photoshop is busy working on those processed files. So you can imagine the amount of time that this can save where your computer is doing one thing, you're doing another. Let's hit cancel out of this for now and take a look and see how our progress has gone with these files. We'll go to our tutorial images folder and as you can see right now we've got three images, client spec 01, 02, 03. We'll open those just briefly. And we've got three images ready for the web. They're all 600 pixels in the longest dimension. They're all at 72 dpi. They've all been sharpened, and they're ready to go up on the web. This is just a hint of the power of actions. I'm sure that once you play with them, you'll find an endless number of ways to speed up your workflow. Enjoy.